BTEC Applied Science Unit 3 Energy from Fuels Calculations. So this is, you need to know it for Unit 3. Uh, on the Unit 3 paper, this has come up a couple of times as the big experiment. So you should really, really be familiar with it. I'm not making any predictions whatsoever about what is on the paper. This might come up. It has come up a couple of times before. Make sure you know it. Energy from fuels. And I'm concentrating on the actual calculations that you would have to do for this particular practical, for analyzing this practical. So you've got five different liquid fuels. Uh, not necessarily these ones, might be these ones. Uh, methanol, ethanol, uh, propan 1-ol, propan 2-ol, butan 1-ol. Uh, and basically, uh, if we burn the same number of moles of each of these, which will release the most energy, okay? Not the same mass, but the same number of moles. Okay, now look at the formula. There's the formula. Do you reckon that you could work out the, the molar mass? Yeah, the relative molecular mass from this. Carbon is 12. Hydrogen is 1. Oxygen is 16. Have a go yourself. Work out the relative molecular mass of each of these. And there you go. So there's the relative molecular mass. Hopefully you got that. Uh, how many carbon atoms does a molecule of each compound contain? Well, now look, methanol has only got one carbon. Uh, ethanol has got two, etc. So one, two, three, three, four. Now, um, is there a link between how much energy we get when we burn it and the number of carbon atoms in a molecule? What's our hypothesis? Can you come up with a decent hypothesis by yourself? Pause the video, write it down. Now, my hypothesis is uh, the energy released per mole of fuel, not per gram, per mole, will be more if the number of carbon atoms in a molecule is bigger, in a molecule of the fuel. So more carbon atoms in a molecule means that there's more carbon atoms in a mole, means that more energy might be released, or my hypothesis says will be released when we burn a mole, okay? We don't have to justify our hypothesis. We don't have to talk about breaking bonds and making bonds and when a, when a, a bond is broken, a carbon atom bond, energy is released, etc., etc. You don't have to justify your hypothesis. You just need to come up with one. And this is my hypothesis. My method. Now, there are different ways of doing this. And this is a suggested method. This is how I would go about doing it. So first of all, you've got your spirit burner, which has a, a particular fuel in. So you measure and record the mass of the spirit burner with the cap on top. These things have a, a metal or a glass cap on, stop, on top, yeah? So you measure its mass. Uh, you also measure out 100 mils of cold water and you measure its temperature. So with a measuring cylinder, measure 100 mils of water and then put that in a conical flask, put a thermometer in there, measure the temperature of the water. Now, you take the cap off, you uh, light the spirit burner, uh, you've got your conical flask on a tripod and you put it underneath, light the burner and use it to heat the water. Uh, again, this isn't the only way of doing it. I'm suggesting this is one way of doing it. Use it to heat the water until the temperature of the water goes up by about 20 degrees. So the temperature of the water should be about 20 to start with. So basically heat it up until it gets to about 40 so from 20 to 40 degrees. Uh, when it's reached 40 degrees, then you put the cap back on the spirit burner and the flame will go out because it doesn't have any oxygen. Then you measure and record the mass of the spirit burner and the cap again. And it will be different, won't it? It'll be smaller. Why? Because we've burnt some of the fuel. 
this is the equipment for my method. This is the equipment you'll need. A spirit burner, one for each of the different fuels. Uh, try and make it so that the wick is about the same size for each of the different fuels so that it's try and make it fair. Uh, a top pan, top pan balance, uh, 0.1 grams resolution or 0.01 grams resolution, uh, at least 0.1 grams. A 100 mil measuring cylinder, um, a thermometer, 0.5 degrees centigrade resolution is fine with that. If you use some kind of digital thermometer, you can get 0.1 or even smaller resolution, but 0.5 degrees is adequate for this experiment. And a 100 mil conical flask. Uh, this would be the method if you were asked to write a method for this. Uh, so measure 100 centimeters cubed, 100 mils of cold tap water in a conical flask in the measuring cylinder, put it in the conical flask, uh, clamp the flask maybe, or I said it actually, I said put it on a retort stand. Uh, weigh the spirit burner, uh, record its mass, record the initial temperature of the water, uh, light the, the wick, put it underneath, uh, allow the alcohol to get, raise the temperature by about 20 degrees, replace the cap, reweigh the spirit burner, record that mass, work out the mass of the fuel used, um, and then do it again with all of the other alcohols using fresh water, cold water every time. And you will get results, for example, for methanol. Uh, here are some results. So the mass of the spirit burner before and after, the difference between them will be the mass of the fuel that you've burned. And then the temperature of the water before and after, and notice it's gone up by about 20 degrees. Okay, so uh, you'll work out the mass of the fuel that was burnt from this raw data. And then we're going to work out the number of moles of fuel which were burned. From the change in temperature, we're going to work out the amount of heat energy that we gave to the water. Yeah, the heat energy gained by the water. And we're going to use this equation, you should know, Q equals MC delta T. M is the mass, C is the specific heat capacity of water, and delta T is the increase in temperature, the change in temperature. Q is the heat energy in joules. So we're going to work out the number of moles of fuel, and we're going to work out the heat energy that the water gained. Uh, here's a table. Now, these results, um, I didn't make them up, but this is from a, an experiment that I did a few years ago. Here are some results here. So we've got for the different fuels, the change in mass of the spirit burner, the change in temperature of the water. You might want to make a note of these, actually. It'll stop you having to go backwards in the video. So let's do methanol together. So 0.85 grams of methanol was burned. How many moles of methanol were burned? Well, one mole of methanol is 32 grams. Remember, we worked out the relative molecular mass. That's the mass of a mole in grams. So one mole of methanol is 32 grams. So how many moles of methanol did we burn? 0.85 divided by 32, 0.027 moles. That's how many moles of methanol we burned. How much heat energy did the water gain? Well, the specific heat capacity of water is 4.2 joules per gram per degree centigrade. It is possible that you'll be told 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree centigrade. If you're using the mass in kilograms, probably use this equation actually, 4.2 joules per gram per degree centigrade, and we'll do the mass in grams. So Q equals MC delta T. The mass is 100 grams, so 100 times 4.2 times 20.5 is 8,610 joules. OK, 
okay? How much energy would one mole of methanol release? Well, we know how much energy we got from 0.027 moles. So how much would one mole release? Well, it'll be 8610 divided by 0.027. Yes, it'll be the amount of energy you got divided by the number of moles. And that works out at, well, 318889. I'm just going to say 319 kilojoules per mole. 319 kilojoules per mole is my result for methanol. If I look on the internet, and see how much energy I should get from a mole of methanol. We actually get from the internet, a source on the internet says it should release 726 kilojoules per mole. Can you think of a reason why our answer is, well, it's about half as much, it's less than half of that. Can you think of a reason why? Hopefully, in your mind, you're thinking, well, maybe not all of the heat energy that came from the fuel was given to the water. Maybe an awful lot of it escaped into the atmosphere. It heated up the air and then this hot air escaped all over the place. It doesn't really matter because that's going to happen with all of the fuels and it, we are comparing them. OK, so it's giving us an idea of how much heat energy is going to be released. So it doesn't really matter as long as that's the case for all of them. Now, can you have a go at this one then? I did methanol, you have a go at ethanol. So pause the video, work it out yourself. Going through it quickly, one mole of ethanol is 46 grams. So 0.75 over 46 is 0.016 moles. How much heat energy did the water gain? Uh, again, MC delta T, 8,400 joules. Okay, how much energy would one mole of ethanol release? And this time it works out at 525 kilojoules per mole. Again, if you look it up on the internet, the answer on the internet from a source on the internet is bigger for the same reason. Right then, I've done methanol and ethanol. Can you do the other ones? Pause the video, practice, make sure you do. Don't be lazy, I know what you like. Don't be lazy, work them out. The energy released kilojoules per mole. Okay, and if you've done it, you should have got these answers. So energy released kilojoules per mole Let's remind ourselves how many carbon atoms there are in a molecule. And do these results support our hypothesis? So we said, we suggested that the more carbon atoms there are in a molecule, the more energy would be released per mole. Looking at this, does it fit that pattern exactly? Mm, it's a bit tricky to say, but there is a general trend. If I do a bar chart, there's a bar chart, kilojoules per mole against the number of carbon atoms in a molecule. I think you should agree that there is a general trend that the more carbon atoms there are, the more energy is released per mole. 